Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I have another video for you today. So the other day I was thinking to myself, now that the Fox Disney merger is going through and Disney's acquisition of Fox is imminent, probably by the end of December or early January, it's obvious that the X-Men are going to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU. However, it's still unclear whether or not this is going to be a fluid transition. Are they going to have to just dump them in there with no explanation? What's going to take place in order to make this merge go through in a smooth way for the fans and for storytelling? Um, so I had an idea. I'm going to pitch you the first episode, the pilot of what would be an X-Men TV series. So let's get into this. The story opens up with this. First off, we see Professor X at his school for gifted youngsters. Recently opened and not a lot of students, five to be exact. The world doesn't really know much about mutants at this time, and we see the first five mutants in the silver blue training room called the Danger Room. The sequence cuts back and forth from the Danger Room to Professor X in his office giving one-on-one -on -one evaluations with each student after the sessions. He talks about their history, their first manifestation of power, their backgrounds, their families, their strengths, their weaknesses, their ability to work as a team and help one another their potential power and the things they need to work on to break through their inhibitions and master their gifts. This results in a final grade for each individual and their role on the team and the code name they will be using to protect their identities when they are serving their community. The results are being decided based on overall performance, ability, teamwork, leadership, power mastery, fitness, and self-control. Henry McCoy, also known as Hank, was great at teamwork and communication, but often showed too much restraint and hesitation. His acrobatics and immense strength and agility made him a huge asset on the battlefield, but his genius level intellect stands out as his most exceptional gift, even among his strength and agility. Surely impressive, but he showed a lack of self-confidence when the situation arose, and Hank hesitated in the face of danger. Hank was given a passing grade, but granted the position of technical operator, even though Professor X had his eyes on him as a potential team leader. Warren Worthington III showed great confidence flying through the air with his magnificent angelic wings, bird-like, light as a feather, but strong. Warren was confident and comfortable using his wings in both combat and for mobility in the air. His communication was great and his ability to heal made him physically resilient. When given the opportunity to lead, a teammate was down in a firefight and the opportunity to rescue or back out arose and Warren chose to retreat. He showed great potential but was not ready to lead an active team. Warren was given a passing grade and the code name Angel, but was given the role of Scout. This was very upsetting to Warren and he felt qualified to be leader, but he had to deal with the consequences of his decisions. He was not ready. Jean Grey. Jean was the second brightest student Professor X had ever seen and felt a strong connection to the young girl as he shared the same powers that she had. The ability to read minds and communicate with telepathy. Jean could also move objects with her mind a power known as telekinesis. The power she displayed was so much greater than she had yet realized, but Professor X was working with her to reach her full potential. She took orders well and was instrumental in bringing out the best in others. She communicated well on the battlefield and was excellent as a support and a leader, but was sometimes overwhelmed by her power and would lose control, causing friendly fire while sparring or mental strain through telepathic feedback while using her telepathy as a mode of communication. Jean was given a passing grade and given the code name Marvel Girl and assigned to the role of TRO, Telepathic Radio Communicative Operator, otherwise known as Troller. Scott Summers. Scott initially struggled with opening up and using his powers because he suffered from a head injury, jumping from a crashing plane with his brother, an accident which took the life of both of his parents and left him and his brother Alex orphaned and separated by adoption. When Scott's powers manifested as a teenager, it nearly destroyed the entire school. The blasts of solar energy he had were so destructive with concussive force Everything he looked at was instantly obliterated. The only thing Scott could do was close his eyes and keep them shut. Professor X took Scott in and became a surrogate father. Professor X came up with an idea to give ruby quartz lenses to Scott to wear as glasses and in a visor in order to filter the light going in and relax his eyes to suppress his powers. At first, Scott was hesitant to use his powers at all, but Professor X gave Scott the confidence and assurance that he could train safely and in a controlled environment. And with this, he was able to blossom and prove himself to be a true team player. He was brave, decisive, and smart, 
strong and skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but most importantly, he always looked out for his fellow teammates. Scott was an excellent order taker who proved to be an understanding commander. He is and was a natural leader. Scott was given a passing grade and the code name Cyclops and was given the role of team leader and commander of the X-Men. Then there's Robert Drake, also known as Bobby. Bobby is a jokester, the class clown, always wisecracking and lifting the spirits of his teammates. He was great when asked to do something that showed off his abilities as he was a hothead and a show off, but he hasn't yet learned to take the seemingly mundane orders seriously. He doesn't know how to handle himself in serious situations. He sees his powers as his favorite toy, and he's gotten pretty good with them, showing advanced levels of control and creativity with his ability to generate and manipulate organic ice. Oftentimes, he gets so caught up in the enjoyment of using his powers, he loses sight in his objective and on the mission, and this will cause the team to fail more often than not because of careless mistakes and disobeying directives. He communicates only when he finds it funny, an opportunity to tell a good joke. Combat is great. Potential and power control are great. In fact, Bobby is technically speaking the most powerful mutant on the team, but he lacks self-discipline and personal responsibility. He cannot be relied on, and so Bobby receives a failing grade. He is so shocked. Bobby cannot believe he is failing the class. He tries to argue he was just having fun, and the guys were taking everything way too seriously. And he asks for another chance to prove himself, but Professor X tells him he had his chance and he failed it. He can test again in three weeks. Bobby is crushed because this means he's going to miss the first few field days with the class. Bobby is frustrated and upset, but he wants to redeem his grade and make the team. Professor X passes Scott, Gene, Hank, Warren, and the team are given the name the X-Men. The team gets a briefing by Professor X who lays out the team's mission statement. The goal of the X-Men is to create a world that tolerates mutants and allows peaceful coexistence between the two races, Homo sapien and Homo superior. At the moment, there is very few known mutants in the world. Not many people are aware of the presence of mutants. Professor X wants to make a grand statement that the X-Men are a force for good and that mutants can be accepted and that mutants and humans can live together peacefully. Professor X warns the X-Men that there are many mutants out there that are going to be using their power for selfish purposes, gain, and even to harm others. There are those other mutants that are willing to do these things in the name of good. But as long as they hold to their mission, Professor X believes that there will be a better tomorrow for humans and mutants alike, and that coexistence is possible. The X-Men are told to suit up and meet at the hangar bay, where Professor X will take the X-Jet and go out to a call that was sent out regarding a potential mutant threat. The X-Men want to get there first so that they can hopefully defuse the situation, alleviate tension between mutants and humans, and maybe even get a mutant to join their cause. Bobby sneaks into the Blackbird, otherwise known as the X-Jet. He is determined to prove himself in the field as an asset to the team. So unbeknownst to the rest of the team, he stows away in the cargo hold. The scene cuts over to a mysterious figure who is giving a similar speech to another group of mutants. It is dark and shadowy and you cannot tell who this figure is, but you hear the sound of a metallic hum and a shadow cast on the ground. Mutants and humans can never coexist. Humanity has never accepted that which it fears. There is no tomorrow for humans and mutants together. We need to prepare ourselves for the worst. The figure pulls forward into the streetlight. The figure looms out of the shadow and reveals a helmet. The time is now. We must stand together. Join me and we will liberate the Brotherhood of Mutants. End scene. With this pitch, though it be short, I wanted to let everybody know that the goal in an X-Men TV series, as it always was with the comics, was long-form storytelling and long-term character development. It would be a shame to rush through the X-Men's personal stories, relationships, and character introductions. There's so many mutants in the world of X-Men, and so many of them have deep, rich backstories that would be very interesting to explore. But more than that, there's so many fans of each of these characters that you could do a lot of justice to the fans and keep fans going on and on and on by having a core central handful of mutants that are the main team. You could spend the first five or six episodes exploring those characters and then building by adding a new mutant every single episode. Maybe it doesn't become part of the team. Maybe it's someone that will recur over time. 
introduce characters like Gambit who will be recurring, who aren't necessarily good and aren't necessarily evil. But they're just out there, they have powers, they have abilities. Both sides of the mutant agenda, both dominance and coexistence, are fighting to get more people on either side of their ranks. And then there's those who wish to be independent or form their own teams. It could have a sense of gang wars, it could have a sense of rivalry, it could have a sense of politics, as X-Men has always been rooted in the struggles of racism. Not just the differences in skin color, but actual races of creatures, humans, and another race, the mutants. This would be very interesting to explore. And this is very relevant in today's day and age. It would be a lot more fun for us as viewers and very much more interesting to have long form storytelling and give a character an episode, give a different character an episode, give another character an episode and make them the focus. A lot of the animated X-Men TV series were everybody's favorite on the Marvel end, even on DC's end, because they did just that. They would focus on long form storytelling, long term character development, and new character introduction. And if we were to get a live action series in that same spirit, in that same form, and start with just the first original five, you could have a world of X-Men to explore. That, I think, would be the best possible scenario. You don't have to have the most logical explanation in the world. We don't know what Marvel has planned for Avengers 4, so it's very difficult to say what they ought to do because we don't know what they are currently doing. So once that comes out, we'll have a better understanding of how to gauge that, but it sounds like either the merging of or the, or the delving into an alternate universe for the X-Men would be ideal, but who knows? We still have to wait and see. To me, to engage the X-Men in long-form storytelling would be the best option, regardless of how you get there. That's my pitch for the pilot. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you guys want me to make more videos like this, pitches for perhaps the Fantastic Four, Namor, Silver Surfer, and Galactus, you guys name the character, and I would love to make more content like this for you guys. Hey guys, d -Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.